Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome the 10th recipient of the Landscape Institute Medal for Lifetime Achievement, Sir David Attenborough. And then one day, the magic day he passed my way. While we spoke of many things, fools and kings, this he said. The, um, thank you very, very much. The first programs I made about natural history were when I accompanied uh, a team from the London Zoo to go and collect animals, rare animals, uh, in West Africa. You wouldn't dream of doing that these days. In those days, zoos thought that their mission was to find rare animals and say to people, this is the last one in the world, isn't that exciting? Aren't you lucky to see it? Things have changed seriously since then. And indeed, it wasn't soon afterwards. I'm speaking now about 50 years ago, 60 years ago, soon afterwards, the penny began to drop. People in zoos began to realize that their mission wasn't to find the rarest thing and boast about it. The thing was to try and save some of the species that were disappearing. So then that was the time when conservation organizations began to get going and you realized you had to save the giant panda, the, the Hawaiian goose, the Arabian oryx, the mountain gorilla. And you congratulated yourselves on how clever you were that these creatures had been saved from extinction. And then you began to realize that actually just one animal by itself or one species by itself was of no consequence. What was of consequence? And the only way you would actually really save it was to save the entire ecosystem. So we had to start looking after the tropical rainforest. And we had to look after the Arctic tundra. And we had to look after our own woodlands in this country. And that was an advance. But since then, we've made another advance. And that is that it is no longer isolated ecosystems that were at danger. Our entire world is in danger. If we are to save it, people have to realize that the world is on our doorstep, that we are part of the world that we have to conserve it, that the world is not there for plundering. We are part of the natural systems. And if we wish to save ourselves, we have to save those natural systems. And they have never, ever been at hazard in the way are, they are at this moment. We are at a hinge moment. Things are taking a bad turn. Things do not look good. What are we to do? The first way we have to do is to persuade human beings in this world, this strange, powerful, stupid series of species, 
that things are not going right. Well, why do you do that? You do that by bringing them face to face with the complexity, the beauties, and the importance of the natural world. And how do you do that? The United Nations tell us that the majority of human beings on this world, over 50%, are urbanized and out of touch with the natural world. They have to be allowed to see it, to understand it, to love it. And who can do that? Ladies and gentlemen, you can. The world depends on an understanding of the natural world. And where does that start? For the majority of human beings on their doorstep into their gardens, if they are lucky enough to have them. So you have a great responsibility to bring the realities of the natural world to the understanding and the love of human beings worldwide. And that is why I shall treasure this present this medal. Thank you very much. I have one more surprise. I have one more surprise uh, for Sir David. The Board of Trustees at the Landscape Institute unanimously agreed with my request that we also make Sir David an honorary fellow of the Landscape Institute. So would you please welcome Ara Anderson and President-elect Jane Finley to the stage, please. Thank you.